A question that a lot of people might be asking these days, is the economy going to collapse? There's a lot of negative headlines in the financial world and this week I'm going to show you how to answer that kind of question very easily. It takes seconds. I'll also provide my analysis of the stocks, commodities, currency markets, and then the day trade of the week on CEI. All right, so is the economy going to collapse? How do you answer that question in just a few seconds? Well, the secret, the key, is to look at what the stock market is doing because the stock market tends to predict what will happen in the economy three to six months out, sometimes even longer. So right now, a lot of the headlines that I've been reading, the negative headlines, are the negative effects of rising interest rates, the housing market slowing down, consumer spending slowing down. Well, that's the effect that the central banks wanted when they started raising interest rates. They wanted to slow the economy down. They wanted to slow inflation down. And we see that starting to work. Well, that started early in 2022. The stock market broke its upward trend early in 2022. I'll show you this in a moment. And it started the process of pricing in higher interest rates and the effect that higher interest rates would have on the economy, it started pricing that in well over a year ago, year and a half ago. And in the last eight months, we've seen the stock market stabilize and actually start to move up. So while the economic outlook has been worsening lately, the stock market has actually been building optimism. And so the economy really is reacting to what the stock market predicted in 2022. What you see in the headlines is what was predicted in 2022 because the stock market usually predicts the economy around six months ahead. Higher interest rates, that's the greatest concern right now. That was priced into the stock market some time ago. And so while the economic outlook has been worse, worsening lately, what we're seeing is the stock market has been building optimism. Now let's take a look at a chart to show how this looks. Here you have a chart of the S&P 500. You can see here the upward trend that was broken in 2022. That's when the market started to price in the negative effect of rising interest rates. And it did that going into November of 2022. In 2023, we've seen the market stabilize in the first quarter and then start to move up as we've gone into the summer. We've had a nice summer rally for the stock market. And that is telling us that the market thinks, the stock market thinks, that the economy is going to get better. That's not what the headlines say. The headlines are still negative. And if we look at the Canadian market, a little bit different picture. You can see again, the upward trend line was broken, but the Canadian market is lagging. Unlike the US market, which has been moving up over the last three months, the Canadian market still remains in a sideways trend. So what the stock market is saying here is that the Canadian economy is lagging the US economy. Perhaps that's government, perhaps that's the emphasis on commodities in the Canadian market, but there is a difference there. And so depending on where you live, you want to take a look at the stock market for where you live. U.S. stock market tells us that the U.S. and perhaps the global economy is getting better or expected to get better sometime in the future, maybe the next three months, while the Canadian stock market is lagging and therefore the Canadian economy should also lag. All right, let's get into this week's analysis of the markets. We can jump into stockscores.com and let's start with a chart of the S&P. We've already taken a look at that long-term view, but let's take a look at the short-term view. You can see there that the buyers are in control. The bottoms are rising from left to right. And so that's a positive. Now we've gotten a little extended to the upside. What do I mean by that? See how the distance from the price to the trend line was quite far, much like it was here. That usually brings a pullback and I think we're starting a little pullback. So in the next few days, I wouldn't be surprised to see a little more weakness in the US stock market. Canadian stock market, let's take a look at the short term chart there. One month time frame, it too has been moving up in the last week or two. So fairly favorable, but again, that three year chart still stuck in a sideways range. So it's stable, but it is not bullish. How about commodities? How about oil to start? Let's take a look at the one month chart. You can see that oil has been moving up since the start of July. So there's optimism building in the oil market. 
However, on the long-term chart, we're still stuck inside this downward trend line. We may break it soon. We built a rising bottom. And if we can break this downward trend line, we may see oil start to recover. And that would sort of, you know, uh, uh, confirm a strengthening economy expectation because oil tends to go up when the economies are strong because consumption of oil goes up. And so there's a little bit of a confirmation starting there in oil. GLD is the symbol for gold. And if we look at that one month chart, you can see it's more or less sideways, had a little bit of gains this month, but then at the end of the week here, uh, we saw some weakness. Three year chart, got a bullish upward bias, but lots of resistance here. So not a lot of upside for gold. How about we take a look at the US dollar, UUP is the symbol. And you can see we had some weakness in the US dollar, a little bit of a bounce off of support, which is what we expect. But with that falling top there, I think we may see the US dollar move lower. And the reason may be that interest rates start to decline, at least interest rates in the bond market. On Bitcoin, which is something that I know many of you track, we've had good gains from the middle of June. Those have quieted and we're now seeing the start of a little bit of weakness here with some falling tops. I'm not overly concerned about this yet, but if we break down through this on GBTC, then we may be starting a pullback. So you want to watch for a breakdown through, say, $19 on GBTC. The final chart we're going to look at is TLT, which is the Treasury Bond ETF. If this is going down, that means bond prices are going down and interest rates are going up. So if we look at this in a very long term time frame, you can see that interest rates have generally been going up. However, they've been stable the last few months, basically for most of 2023. And the question is, are we going to start to see the bond market move up, which would mean interest rates moving down? Or are we going to follow through and touch these lows here? Uh, an important chart to watch in terms of predicting where the stock market is going to go. All right, finally, uh, well, that's about it. Let's take a look now at the ratings I have. U.S. stocks bullish on both time frames. Canadian stocks long-term uh, long neutral, short-term bullish. Gold neutral on both time frames. Oil neutral, long-term bullish, short-term. U.S. dollar neutral long-term, bearish short-term. Bitcoin bullish long-term, neutral short-term, and interest rates neutral on both time frames. All right, let's take a look at the day trade of the week. And here you see it, CEI, stock that started to behave abnormally on Friday morning. And this stock has been a hot stock in the past, but it's cooled down for the last few months. But when it started to show this abnormal activity Friday morning, I put it on my watch list as a stock to keep an eye on. And then we watch for an action candle, which is this little pink and yellow dot here, breaking out from an ascending triangle on a stock that's behaving abnormally. That was the first buy signal. That had a nice little rip higher. We had another one a little later in the day. There was a break here, and then there was a more substantial break there, but the gains out of that weren't as strong, you know, small gains on that one. But CEI was a decent stock to trade on Friday. Well, hope that you've enjoyed this week's Stock Scores Market Minutes. If so, click on the like button, subscribe to the channel, and most importantly, trade well.